I meant to finish and post this video a long time ago, but I ended up working on the next two videos first because they all kind of go together. I kept coming up with improvements and tweaks to my two upcoming machines, so I had to keep re-recording things, and it ended up taking forever. But on the bright side, I have two more videos almost ready to go after this one. I'll be talking about the logic blocks and Kralmar as though they're new, which might sound strange since you're used to them at this point. Without further ado, on with the video. Hello YouTube, today I'm checking out the full release of Besiege. There's a lot to cover, so I'm splitting it into two videos. I'll save the exciting new island, Krolmar, for the next video. Here, I'm going to explore the new possibilities opened up by the logic blocks. There are six logic blocks in total. One of them is a sensor, which emulates a button press when something gets in front of it. You can adjust the length and radius of its view. In this example, each sensor is set to activate the flamethrower below it. Another new block is the logic gate. It emulates a button press based on key inputs and logic operators. One cool use for this is to make controls that toggle from one device to another. I set up a simple example here. When you hold Shift and Z, a logic gate emulates numpad 1, which turns on the left flamethrower. Another logic gate uses Ctrl and Z to activate the right flamethrower. Two additional logic gates use caps lock to toggle between holding shift and holding control. So each flamethrower is controlled by Z, and you can conveniently toggle between them. A more complex setup lets you switch between vehicles, using the arrow keys for both of them. A, Z, and S work each grabber arm in this dual car machine. Space turns on the first camera, then caps lock switches between cameras. The other four logic blocks are a timer, an altimeter, an angulometer, and a speedometer, which emulate button presses when certain conditions are met. In principle, one might expect these to make self-balancing machines easy to design. But that wasn't the case with my initial test build, which activates flying spirals when a corner goes below a certain height. A player manually correcting an imbalance would naturally slow down when they get close, but the logic blocks stay on full power until they reach the goal. So they overshoot, then they have to compensate for that, and you can end up with a really wobbly machine. It used to be that this instability was even worse at higher game speeds. But thankfully they fixed that in the version 1.02 update, and now the logic blocks work consistently across timescales. That update also greatly improved the angulometers, which brings me to my first serious effort with the logic blocks. A self-balancing unicycle. I call my sieging unicycle, the fire drill. I did my best to optimize fire drills maneuvering, speed, and weapon loadout. In fact, the main reason this video took so long was that I kept coming up with improvements and tweaks, and then I'd have to re-record all the zone completions. The way this unicycle works is, the player controls two hidden and two rear-facing flying spirals. The wheel, which is weighted so it acts as a reaction wheel, is automated for front-to-back balance. The top flying spirals and reaction wheel cog are automated for lateral balance. To smooth out the automation, I have one angulometer set to give the wheel full power when the forward tilt exceeds 15 degrees. When the forward tilt is between 5 and 15 degrees, another angulometer activates a timer, which taps the control for partial power. Two angulometers on the other side do the same thing when the unicycle is in reverse. Finally, two angulometers in the front manage the sideways flying spirals and reaction wheel cog. As you can see, fire drill stability is basically worry-free. But in the off chance you do end up totally sideways, you can use the flamethrowers to push yourself back up. For smooth balancing in both forward and reverse, 
I need four angulometers tracking the same angle. This could be streamlined if one angulometer had the option to emulate different key presses at different angle ranges. Then I could do the same job with one angulometer instead of four, and I'd have more room for weapons and other fun stuff. Plus, more transitional phases could be set up to make self-balancing machines even smoother. Another helpful feature would be an option to make button presses more intermittent as you approach the target angle. Something else I noticed is that the logic blocks are surprisingly heavy. Each one weighs 0.5 units, which is the same as the ballast at the default weight. So, over a quarter of the weight of my unicycle is just the logic blocks, even with all the weapons. In real life, the gauges and sensors on a vehicle don't normally add significant weight. In the game, lighter logic blocks would let you include more of them for more complex programming. They could be weightless and non-physical, like the camera block, or they could just weigh a trivial amount. I know I said I was going to save Chromar for the next video, but I really wanted to beat at least one Chromar zone on a unicycle. In fact, that's the main reason I kept tweaking the design until I could get some weapons on here and still have it be stable. So I'm giving you a preview of Chromar with Kahra's Village. Like the village of Diom in Talbrand, the goal is to lay waste to a small medieval town. This village has fewer targets, but the buildings take more force to break, and there are angry villagers who try to defend their home. Like you would expect from an impromptu militia, they're not as strong or as tough as the Krolmar Knights, but you do have to stay on the move. So there you have it, the fire drill. Perfect for those who are tired of worrying about keeping even tire pressures. Please check it out at the Steam Workshop link below.